I read 50 books in 2023. That is an all-time record for me. If you had told me two years ago I would read 50 books in like the course of three years, I would not believe you. I was not a book girly, like at all. But here we are in 2024 with all the books I read in 2023. My favorites, my least favorites. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to talk about books with you guys. Things to know about me, I rate things pretty high, just typically. I'm gonna work on that in 2024. But if I was entertained, it's getting probably five stars. And my thing is that I like to go back and forth between romance and thrillers because I get too attached to my romance characters and then I have a hard time wanting to like fall in love with somebody else. So that's why we put the thriller in the mix. No one to really fall in love with there. We're gonna try to go through this as fast as possible because it's a lot of books. So let's grab a shot of espresso and dive in. Okay, let's dive in. We go in order of when I read them. I started off the year with a thriller. I read Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. This was a twisty, turny thriller. I loved it. It's about a married couple who is kind of in a rocky place in their relationship and they went a weekend away to this isolated chapel in Scotland. They're hoping it's gonna save their marriage. They get hit with a massive snowstorm. It's immediately so creepy. The chapel is creepy. There's all these unexplainable things happening and the husband has face blindness so he can't recognize faces. There's an element that really adds to the suspense and the creepiness and it was so good. I gave this five stars. It had me hooked until the last page. Next up we have Funny You Should Ask by Alyssa. No! That's fine. We're gonna worry about that later. Funny You Should Ask by Alyssa Sussman. This was so good to me. I was so hooked by the characters. I felt like they were so thought out and just like I, I knew them. A journalist gets to interview her celebrity crush and this celebrity is based off of an interview with Chris Evans. I'm picturing him the entire time. We have quite the week together. It's truly like every girl's dream to have this kind of week with their celebrity crush. And 10 years later, they get to do a follow-up interview. It is so fun, written in a then and now kind of format. And you really just, I feel like I knew them. I knew them. I was them. I love them. Next, we hopped onto the things we never got over, Bandwagon. This is a thick book. She is long, but she's so good. She's so good. The main character, Naomi, leaves her fiance at the altar and escapes to a small town to save her twin sister. Immediately, things are going very wrong and she runs into this bad boy, Knox who knocks you off your feet. <laughs> He's not having anything to do with her, hates her high maintenance attitude, her city girl lifestyle. It's giving grumpy sunshine, it's giving enemies to lovers, it's giving everything you want. Back to the thrillers, I read The Golden Couple. This was a crazy ride. I started the year off so strong with books. This is about a seemingly perfect couple. They have everything and they seek out therapy because they're kind of going through it. They have some secrets. And they end up with an unconventional therapist who actually lost her professional license due to her unconventional practices. And it is a wild ride. She's got 10 step program to fix relationships. They slowly reveal more secrets throughout this book and it is so wild. Really never knew who to trust, who was manipulating who, and like it was just crazy. Ignore the cover of The Naked Man, but this was such a good book. It was definitely a little intimidating because it was kind of long, but Noah Riley is truly one of my favorite book boyfriends of all time. This book is kind of around a friend group who has been friends forever. Um, the main character, Ari, is in love with one of the friends in the group, but he's best friends with her brother. She's been pining over him forever. She's hoping to get her chance once they go to college. She ends up meeting Noah Riley, who's on the football team with her brother and her, you know, previous love of her life. Kind of giving love triangle, it's giving brother's best friend. Noah Riley is the most patient wonderful sweetest man and I love him like truly love him I sobbed my eyes out of this book there was a twist that I just didn't see coming and it absolutely shattered me but then put me back together and it was so good I know Colleen Hoover is kind of controversial but her books are really what got me into reading so I did read a few of her books in 2023 and we started off with Heartbones. I feel like with her books I really get to know the characters I feel like they're very well thought out and you just get attached to them in a certain way at least I do this starts off really dark with the main character's mother dying of an overdose and it's very graphic so just keep that in mind if you're gonna read it she's used to a life of poverty and neglect and she goes to live with her father after her mother dies he's married he has another daughter and they're living a nice life and she goes to live with him and she meets the boy next door. She's immediately attracted and she senses something in him, like a kindred spirit kind of thing. And they have this connection despite, you know, growing up in different lifestyles. It takes place over the course of a summer and you really get to learn the relationship. And it is, I really liked it. Frida McFadden can almost do no wrong, in my opinion. I read so many of her books in 2023 and I plan to read the rest that I haven't finished in 2024. Never Lie was one of my absolute favorites, if not my favorite of hers. So this is about a newlywed couple that is looking for the 
house of their dreams and they go to tour this isolated house, kind of like a, a big estate that's in the middle of nowhere. Of course, there's a snowstorm. They get stuck there. They end up discovering that the home was last owned by a very famous psychologist who went missing, like vanished four years ago without a trace and they don't know why. This is super spooky, super twisty, so wild, so much fun, highly recommend. We went back to Coho with Maybe Someday. This was different to me. It starts off with the main character, Sydney, actually catching her boyfriend of two years, cheating on her with her roommate slash best friend. Horrible. But she's also kind of had her eyes on the guy that lives across from her at the apartment complex. He plays music on the balcony every night and she likes to listen. There's a lot of elements in this that I thought were very unique. I don't want to spoil. So I will tell you, I gave this four stars. It was cute. I wasn't obsessed but it was cute. I also read the other two books in the series. We have Maybe Not, which is a short novella about some side characters. I actually liked the side characters, I think, more than the original characters. They were super bantery, kind of hated each other, but it was fun. Like <laughs> It was cool to see their POV about what was going on in the previous book. And then there's a third book called Maybe Now. This was cute. It was kind of more about Maggie, which is another character from the first book. It has all the characters in it. It's kind of fun. I don't really remember that much about it, if I'm being honest. Again, cute, but like, I'm not gonna rave about it. It didn't stick with me. Then I read a mystery called Exiles by Jane Harper. This was a very slow build to me. It was my first mystery, so maybe that was just like, that was a me thing. I'm used to the fast paced twisty thrillers that this was just really slow. This is also technically the third book in a series, but it does read as a standalone. Like you don't have to read the other two if you wanna read this. It dives into the mystery around a mother leaving her child in the parking lot of a wine festival in Australia. The case goes cold and they pick this up a year later trying to figure out what happened to her as the wine festival comes back around felt like it was just really slow, very repetitive. It could have been shorter. And then the end just depressed me. So I didn't love this. We jumped back to my tried and true, Frida McFadden with The Inmate. This was again, a crazy ride. The main character has been hired at a maximum security prison. She's the new nurse practitioner and she has a crazy history with one of the inmates. This was crazy until the last page, like truly, you just didn't know what was gonna happen. I tried to guess, I was wrong. This got a solid five stars. This was a highly anticipated read for me, The Housemaid's Secret. It's a sequel to The Housemaid. This essentially is the same storyline as the first one. So if you liked that, you'll probably like this. Essentially, Millie is hired by a very wealthy couple. Husband seems incredible, he's attractive, like the perfect man, but the wife is always in the guest room, like will not leave the room, will not speak to her. Lots of strange stuff happening here. And again, if you liked the first one, you will probably like this. I didn't like it as much as the first because I felt like it was kind of repetitive, but it was a good read. This book, A Thousand Boy Kisses, ruined me, ruined me. I was sobbing, like sobbing for chapters and chapters and chapters on end. This is like childhood friends, second chance romance in the best way possible. I went into this blind and there was something in this book that I didn't expect that shattered my soul and ru ruined me in a five star kind of way. Like I would recommend this to anyone if you are looking for a good cry, this will give it to you. It starts off with the two main characters as children, they are neighbors and they become best friends. And then him and his family have to move back to Norway when they become you know, teenagers. She ends up cutting him out and then when he moves back two years later, a whole, a whole ton goes down. This was so good. I could cry thinking about it. Okay. Another Frida book, we have The Locked Door. This is about the daughter of a serial killer who killed women in the basement of her childhood home. The story takes place decades later, her father's locked up, but one of her patients actually ends up murdered in the same way that her father used to kill his victims. So we're kind of figuring out like, is she a killer? Does she take up to her father? Who did it? How did it get done? All that stuff. I gave it four stars. It bounces back and forth between her childhood and present day. So you kind of know what happened with her growing up. Really wild book as per usual. I wanted to like this so badly. I really did. This is the sequel to Things We Never Got Over, which I loved. So reading this, I had high hopes. It follows Nash's story, which is Knox's brother. And this was such a drag. It was such a drag. It feels like basically the same plot as the first book, but just so much worse. Like I just did not care for this. It took me so long to read. Obviously it's another really long book. Um, didn't love this, but you do kind of have to read it if you want to read the third one, in my opinion. So, but that one's worth it, so. Back to Freda McFadden, Do Not Disturb. This one starts off really wild as per usual, but like it starts off with a murder and then she's on the run. She gets caught in a snowstorm and has to pull off at some creepy ass motel. And there's a room at the motel that is locked. They will not rent it out because terrible things have happened in that room. The motel is also owned by an attractive man and his wife lives at a house across the way. And like you can see her in the window, she's like creepy as heck over there. I was entertained. 
Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. This book, I was so in love with the characters to a point where like I can't even, I can't even describe the attachment that I felt to them. Easily one of my top, top reads of the year. This is giving childhood friends second chance romance. Like it is so good. To me, this brings back the feelings of being a teenager and having your first crush and like how that feels and how it feels to be young and just vulnerable for the first time ever. Like if you really get back into that mindset, it's kind of wild. It brought a lot of childhood memes back for me. It's totally in you know past and present times you get to know the characters when they were kids and as they get older and what happens in between and it is so good the main character and her dad buy a holiday home on the lake after her mom dies to just bring a little bit of happiness and joy back to their lives and the guy next door ends up being her best friend and they grew up together it's been almost a year since i read this and it's still so vivid in my mind like their little reading room and oh I love this. On a Quiet Street is a thriller told by three different women. They all live in a wealthy community and it is wild. All the secrets that these women have and everything that goes on in all of their lives. I feel like you get so invested in each of their situations and it's wild. If you like a nice neighborhood community drama with a whole bunch of thrilling stuff, this one, I gave it five stars. Not that that's that hard to do. Then I read the Simple Wild series. This was one of my favorite reads of the year for sure, like the whole series. It did not fall off at any point. This is about Kala, a Toronto girl that flies to Alaska after receiving a very worrisome call from her father that she hasn't seen in many, many years. She flies to Alaska to reconnect with her dad and meets Jonah, an Alaskan pilot. He is grumpy and she is sunshine. He is not having her city girl attitude, like he's just not there for it and Oh man, so good, we love Jonah. It's giving enemies to lovers, it's so good. And then there's a sequel, Wild at Heart. I bought both of these because so I really loved them. Usually with sequels, I am concerned that they're not gonna be as good after this, but this hit just the same. Like it was so good. It was a continuation of the story and it was amazing. There's also a Christmas novella called Forever Wild. This was also so good. It was so cute. It left me wanting even more of the characters. Like I felt like I did not have enough yet. And there's also another book called Running Wild. This is the last one of the series. It's about a side character from the other books. And I really didn't think I was gonna like it cause I just didn't care about her, but it surprised me. And I definitely enjoyed it. It was a very similar plot to the first book, but like I still liked it. Then there was a bit of a Frida binge. I read one by one. The description of this one is one by one, they will get what they deserve. And I don't know if they do, but like one by one, they're falling off. Essentially three couples go on a trip in a minivan and it breaks down, but they're not too far from the hotel. So they figure they're just gonna hike the rest of the way. There's no cell reception and the forest gets a little bit spooky. They do get lost and one by one, we're losing people. This is told through multiple different POVs, but also we have an anonymous narrator throughout it. And you're kind of trying to figure out which of these people is the anonymous person. And it's a wild ride. Another wild ride, Ward D. This was low key kind of scary. Like I was a little scared reading it at night. Essentially a medical student has to take a shift on Ward D, which is a locked psychiatric unit. Very quickly in this story, things go very wrong. Like very, there's no time wasted. You're not like eased into this. It is so scary. <laughs> there's other reasons why she is horrified of taking this shift and you slowly discover why as the book goes on. And it's crazy as per usual with these books. The perfect son, not so perfect. The main POV in this story is told by a mother who's convinced her 16 year old son is a psychopath. It only gets worse when a girl in his high school goes missing and he is the last person to have seen her alive. Crazy story, the end was wild. I would have never guessed how this is gonna end. But I also don't try that hard. I'm like, mm, let's just see how it plays out. Super fast pace, couldn't put it down. You know the vibes. Needed a little bit of a light break after those and I read Evidence of the Affair by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was a very short novella that I actually fell in love with. Like it had so much more depth than a typical novella to me. It takes place in the 70s and it's told 100% through letters between the four main characters. Starts off with Evidence of the Affair and it's super interesting. I felt like I knew these characters and like I understood what they were going through and I was invested. It, it was only 100 pages and I I was invested. I was genuinely impressed by this. I, I thought it was so good. When in Rome by Sarah Adams was such a good read. Did I think that it was gonna be based in Rome, Italy? Yes, I did. And I got it for my trip to Rome in the summer and it turns out it was Rome, Kentucky. I knew nothing going into this book as with all the books that I read. It's about a celebrity who loves Audrey Hepburn and is inspired by Roman Holiday and wants to go to Rome. She's having a bit of a crisis. She got a big tour coming up and her car ends up breaking down on the lawn of some hunky, grumpy guy. But being the soft, 
kind guy inside that he is he takes her in and gives her a room to sleep because she's kind of stranded we got grumpy sunshine you have small town hallmark kind of energy here super cute really really loved it i hated this this I do not recommend. This is my lowest rating of the year, which was two stars. Probably should have given it zero because I can't remember anything about it. It was so nothing to me. One night in Foxbrook, I downloaded from Stuff Your Kindle Day. And after that, I said no more Stuff Your Kindle Day because it was a waste of time. I think there's a reason why those books are free for the most part. If you like Star Wars and smutty Star Wars, you might like this, but I don't really care for that. And I just didn't get any of the references. I didn't care at all. The book is 69 pages and that's all you need to know. Meet me at the lake. This was a good read. This is another Toronto Muskoka set book. And if you're a Toronto girl, you would appreciate that. I felt like I could picture where it was set a lot better because I know where it's set. This couple meets and they have the most wild 24 hours together ever. They make a plan to meet one year later at the lake, meet me at the lake, but he doesn't show. And then 10 years later, she's kind of going through it. There's lots going on and he shows up and the story goes from there. Really great summer vibes. If you're looking for a good summer read or just want, like, want some summer energy in your life, this was cute. I gave it four stars. The Wife Upstairs. I will start by saying this is a fantastic thriller if you haven't read Verity, okay? <laughs> if you've read Verity, you are going to reread Verity when you read this. It is copy paste. I don't know which one came out first, but they are the same. Same plot, same everything. Like truly, I felt like I knew it was gonna happen every step along the way. There were some twists that were a little bit different, but like it was the same book. Essentially, a woman is hired to take care of a disabled woman and she slowly starts learning her secrets through her journal and slowly discovers that not everything is as it seems. This I was so excited to read, Once More With Feeling by Alyssa Sussman. I was so excited after loving Funny You Should Ask. I thought like this was gonna be the same kind of vibe. I mean, look at the covers. I was like, this is gonna be the same. I'm gonna love it so much. It kind of fell a little flat. This is like second chance romance with two childhood pop stars. We get a dual timeline format here. So we get to discover what childhood fame was like, what blew up back in the day. And then you get the present time where the main character is actually getting a second chance at fame after her entire career blew up. But the plot was so good. Like there was so much that this could have been, but the characters just fell super flat for me. I, I had no attachment to them. I didn't care. I didn't buy the love story. And that's a bummer because I can usually be sold pretty easily. Want to know a secret by Friedrich Fadden. This was a three star for me. Usually like I know her stories are very unrealistic and crazy and all over the place, but this one just like, I don't know. I really didn't like the main character. I thought she was really annoying, but I was really intrigued because she's a YouTuber. She's got her own bake show. And her whole thing is that every episode she shares a secret at the end of it, a baking secret, but she has a lot of other secrets going on. This is another like neighborhood kind of thriller and the end was a little weird to me. I don't know. I thought it was just, this was very mad. Now this was a great thriller. Don't Let Her Stay by Nicola Sanders. Five stars for me personally. When someone inside your house wants you dead and no one believes you. This is about a woman and her husband that live in kind of an isolated home with their new daughter, but he has a 21 year old daughter from a previous marriage that ends up coming to stay with them. She got a bad history and she also abandoned her father after he got married to this current wife. And now suddenly she wants to make amends and like know her little sister. This kept me hooked and guessing until the very last page. Like it was so all over the place in the best way. Like it's exactly what I want out of a thriller. I didn't know who to trust, who was manipulating who. It was all over the place until the last page. Every summer after. This book was amazing. I was a little concerned that I wasn't gonna be as into it because everyone told me that it's the same as Love In Other Words. Pretty much the exact same plot. But there was something about it that still really got me. We get the childhood friends to lovers, second chance romance, same kind of vibe entirely. But this one takes place in Toronto and Muskoka, which is obviously special to me. While it was the same plot, these characters really just did a number on my heart. And like, I can still picture this. I loved this so much. But also if you didn't know, the main girl in this, her name is Persephone, not Persephone. <laughs> when I first started reading it, I was like, Persephone, that's an interesting name. And then I started talking to other people about it that also thought her name was Persephone. I ended up Googling it to know the pronunciation I didn't want to keep reading it as Persephone if it was not Persephone. Anyways, just so you know, it's Persephone. We have another thriller. This is the last thing he told me. This was a really fun mystery thriller. Like you're on a hunt to figure out what happened to this guy. Essentially a woman's husband goes missing and she's stuck with his 16 year old daughter from a previous marriage. The last thing he did before disappearing, he got his wife a note that said, protect her. The mother and the daughter go on a hunt to figure out what happened to her father. And as they start putting the pieces together, it's a lot darker than they thought. I gave it five stars. It hooked me. I also kind of want to watch the show. Things we left behind. They really, she made a comeback, Lucy score. I was really concerned after the second book, but this one really made up for it. Lucian and Sloane, 
my favorite story. I think out of all the books, like their story had the most depth and history and just like more background. There's obviously a lot more buildup for this story because there's like a thousand pages <laughs> of buildup here before this book came out. And this is another really long book, but I did not want it to end. It was so good. I love them. It was so great seeing all the flashbacks to their childhood and the beginning of their friendship and how everything went wrong in their relationship and everything that was going on in the background while they hated each other. <laughs> all in all, we love, we love Suit Daddy. We love. Next, we have Local Woman Missing. This was such a good thriller. I get four and a half stars out of five. This would have gotten a solid five stars if the ending wasn't as whack as it was. And if I'm saying it's whack, it's gotta be whack. It was just like it felt rushed and it didn't make sense with the rest of the story. I just didn't like the ending, but the story itself like immediately hooks you in. Two women go missing as well as a six-year-old girl. And 11 years later, the six-year-old actually shows up and they're trying to figure out what happened to her mother and the other missing woman. You get different timelines and also different POVs with different characters in the book and it was a good one. It definitely kept me hooked. <laughs> the Coworker by Frieda McFadden. This was a different kind of story to me. It was very interesting, but also really weird. I learned a lot about turtles. If you know, you know. It's about two very, very different female coworkers who have cubicles next to each other. One of them is like top sales, blonde, popular, that kind of girl. And then the other one is a little bit different. She really likes turtles. She's socially awkward and one day she doesn't show up for work and that's definitely not like her. And there's a whole investigation and it's looking bad. I really liked this up until part two. Then it was a little too weird. It was a little too weird for me. There was a lot happening, but it was still entertaining. You know, that's really how I rate my books. Was I entertained? Yes. But then my top read of the year, no surprise, fourth wing. I ate this shit up. I ate this shit up. I ate it up. But it took me a few chapters at first because this is my first fantasy book as an adult and getting into the new world, I really wasn't sure what to visualize. Like it was all kind of new to me. But once I started understanding the world, I was so invested. I This was my escape. Escapism at its finest in this book. You have no idea what this book's about. It's essentially about 20 year old Violet who goes into the writer's quadrant at a war college. There's four quadrants at the school, kind of think Harry Potter, but like it's more than just houses. They all have tasks and the writer's quadrant is to ride dragons. And these are no ordinary dragons. These are sassy dragons. They're there's like such a great part of the story. I love the dragons. Here are the dragons. She's immediately faced with her family's enemy, Zayden, and she's told to stay very far away from him. But of course, he's tall, he's hot, he is mysterious. If you know, you know. It has romance, it has action, it has fantasy, it has friendship, it has everything. It has everything. This was my favorite book and I'm so excited for more. The reading slump was kind of tough after that one, so I went for the tried and true, Frieda McFadden, brain damage. This is about a very successful dermatologist who gets shot in the head. <laughs> She's got no memory of who she is, what happened to her when she wakes up in the hospital. She goes through rehab. There's actually like a romance element in this book, which really surprised me. It was very different from typical Freedom McFadden books, a lot less twisty and suspenseful. It was like an easy, entertaining read. Gradually throughout the book, she regains some memory and you figure out what happened to her and whatnot. And it's... It's interesting. I was still too obsessed with Fourth Wing to get into another romance, so I went for another thriller, The Only One Left by Riley Sager, and this was top for me. Like, this was one of my top thrillers of the year. The main character was a caregiver that was assigned to work for a woman who murdered her entire family in 1929, or at least that's what we think. But she also has her own complicated past, which is why she had no other option but to work for this woman who nobody else wanted to work for, for obvious reasons. Throughout the book, you learn what happened in 1929 on this big night. And truly you are hooked to this like little book for the entirety of it till the very last page because you want to know what happens so badly and it did not disappoint. Truly the ending shook me to my core. I needed to read some really quick stuff in between because after that, Iron Flame came out. It's another big book. This took me three weeks to read. It was a very long one. Granted, it's almost 900 pages, so it kind of makes sense. But also there was a lot of new stuff that was put into this book, a lot of new characters, a lot of new elements, and it was hard for my brain to keep up with it. I would have to reread multiple pages at once because I could not absorb the amount of information that was thrown at me. I just felt like we were introduced to too much at once and it just took me a long time. Now, with that being said, like, I just love this world so much that I can't give it anything less than five stars. It probably gets a four, but like, I don't even want to say that. There was lots going on and in the last little bit of this book, whoa, blew me away. And the ending, if you know, you know, I am on the edge of my seat waiting for the third book, on the edge of my seat. 
I need to know. I need to know. And then we got to the holiday books because I told myself December, purely holiday, novellas, romances, whatever. Don't know if I'm gonna do this again next year because these books were all kind of questionable. Starting off with Resting at Screw Chase by Megan Quinn. This was cute, nothing super to rave about it. I read it entirely on a plane. I think it took me like an hour. The main female character is going through a breakup. She goes back home to her small town and the guy that she once loved still lives there. They're both super grumpy over the holidays and they end up exchanging letters back and forth about how much they hate Christmas without realizing it's with each other. It was sweet, it was cute. That's all there really is to say. The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox has so much more potential than it pulled off. You got a classic twins switching places storyline here. Very hallmark. One of them is living in LA as a host of a baking show. The other one works at their family owned bakery in the small town they grew up in. They switch places. There's obviously romance involved, but it took me a long time to get to the romantic elements in this book. And it just like, I don't know, the twins had, they were too similar to me and it was told in third person. So a lot of the time I was reading it and I would forget like, which twin this was about because they seemed the exact same to me. This just dragged, like all I wanted to do was read it so I could finish it. One Christmas play, one dead Santa, everyone's a suspect, the Christmas appeal. This did not have a lot of Christmassy energy. It didn't. It takes place around Christmas, but like that's it. That's where the Christmas ends. Honestly, it took me kind of a while to follow because it's told through emails and text messages with a lot of different characters. And I was like, I don't even know these people. I don't know what's going on. Eventually I caught up and like, it was okay. I'd give it three stars. I wouldn't necessarily recommend especially if you're looking for a holiday type book. It was a quick murder mystery though, if you wanna reach a reading goal. Snowed in with the player. We got some football players here. We also got some twins that go up to their family's cottage to bake cookies, watch Christmas movies, the works, and it turns out that their brother's actually up there with his football friends. And one of the twins has a huge crush on one of the guys. So we got like brother's best friend trope and it was cute. Like they get snowed in together and everyone else leaves and you know, predictable, cute. I gave it four stars, even though it probably gets like three. Miss Frida also has a Christmas novella. This was like 50 pages, but I actually really liked it. It was a very weird, wacky story. Mostly read it to reach my reading goal, but I actually enjoyed it. The main character is too broke to buy her new husband a Christmas present for their very first Christmas as husband and wife. And he's been very clear about how excited he is for this gift exchange. So she's doing desperate things to get him the gift of his dreams. And it turns out really twisty. Kind of hated most of the Christmas books that I read this year, but Christmas Cupid was actually the cutest of them all. The main character gets stuck at an isolated cabin with a douchey hockey bro. He's a professional hockey player that actually has an injury that he doesn't really feel comfortable talking about publicly yet. It's really dragging him down and she's kind of going through a breakup or just like the worst year of her life. And her brother, who's also the teammate of this hockey player, sends them both up to the cabin without telling either of them that they're both going to be there. We have forced proximity. We have brother's best friend. We have enemies to lovers, grumpy sunshine, like the whole works. And I thought it was really cute. I actually liked the characters. Um, it was, it was better than the other ones at the very least. And lastly, I read Same Time Next Year by Tessa Bailey. This is a New Year's Eve fake marriage trope. I like to read things that are set or based in what's happening in my current life. And I read this right before New Year's, which I thought was perfect. The main character has to marry her brother's teammate so that he can get a green card and play professional hockey in the US. Now he's secretly been in love with her since he met her and she has to make sure it's super professional. Like there is no real marriage happening here. She is not interested in marriage, but they have to spend a lot of time together to get to know each other and really pull off the green card thing. Honestly, this was pretty cringy. Like I really, there was a lot of cringe, a lot of cringe, but like it was fine. It was cute enough. I gave it three stars and that was, that was it. Those were the books that I read in 2023. Let me know your top three books that you read last year in the comments. Looking to add to my 2024 TBR. I'm also just so excited to talk books here. This is my favorite thing to talk about ever. So if you enjoy, definitely let me know what other book videos you wanna see from me. But because this is already so long, I already know I'm going to end this here. Thank you for watching today's video. My fellow book people, I appreciate you. Glad to have you here. And I will see you in the next vlog. Bye.